There is nothing quite like it. The trembling ground underfoot. 1,000 horsepower of 60 tons of steel and iron hurtling 50 miles an hour straight at you. This terrible iron horse. Spitting steam, smoke and cinders into a calm blue sky. This beast was not only the symbol of America's rise to economic power, it was also the engine that created America's first billion dollar industry. Inside the cramped cabin, the firebox blazes with red hot coal. In front of the box, the boiler is hissing super hot water, hissing steam. Within the cab, a two-man crew. The engineer or driver controls the iron beast, stopping, starting, and speed. The fireman is responsible for the fire, fuel, coal or wood, steam pressure and water levels. Water levels are maintained by a series of water supply towers along the tracks. All this power contained and mounted on the chassis and running gear of the locomotive. Steam locomotives, such as this big behemoth from the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad, are generally categorized by their wheel arrangement. For example, uh, this locomotive is called a 484. Another word for the 484 is a northern type. Uh, those numbers, 4, 8, and 4, the first number refers to the number of little wheels guiding the locomotive into a curve. Consequently, with a four wheel, such as this and this wheel down here, that's one truck, one wheel set, and two wheels on this side plus two more on the other makes the four wheels, guides this big monster weighing 317 tons into a curve very smoothly so that we don't have any of those lateral jolts transmitted back through the length of the train. Moving back, the second number in that 484 is the number of driving wheels. Here is the second driving wheel and you'll notice how tall it is. It's over six feet in diameter. So with this being 72 inches times 1.15, this locomotive could easily travel uh, 90 to 100 miles an hour. The third number are the number of wheels supporting the firebox. This uh, silvery colored uh, box is, is the firebox where the fire actually is built inside. And there are two, uh, four wheels supporting the firebox on the back end. So this, this locomotive is a 484. The largest steam locomotive ever built was the Union Pacific's Big Boy. Twice the size of this engine and weighing in at over 600 tons. In front of the cabin are the guts of the steam engine, its working parts. And I'd like to kind of describe the various aspects of a steam locomotive insofar as um, how the locomotive operates and what's necessary to do that. And at the very front of the locomotive where the 683 is uh, located, we have the, the electric headlight. The next thing that we see here is the smokestack, which in this case is a straight smokestack. This would exhaust um, the spent steam, what it was finally used on the cylinder that I'm standing on uh, to propel the train and also it would be a release for the hot gases from the fireboxes. While I'm here, I'll point out to you the steam dome. This is kind of where all the valving comes together to operate the steam mechanisms here. Um, this little vertical standing piece of black pipe here is the whistle that we so long love to hear uh, drifting through the countryside when we see a steam locomotive passing a, an automobile crossing. Five years after the Baltimore and Ohio sent the first locomotive into history, 
American engineers and master mechanics were building strong, lightweight locomotives. Locomotives that were the best in the world. Leading that charge were three American steam locomotive builders, Norris, Rogers, and the biggest and brightest of them all, Baldwin Locomotive Works. The nation now had everything it needed for the great American railroad boom. A railway building mania that began in the 1830s and persisted through the 1890s. Hi, I'm Bill Ambrose. If you like this video, subscribe so we can bring you more programming from our studio. Thank you for subscribing.